Hans, wach auf. Die Russen sind wieder da. The development of the Panther II started as far back as 1938, order to replace the Panther III and IV designs. Various designs from various companies were considered, until finally the MAN design was decided upon in May 1942. By September, the design had reached the prototype stage, and by December, full-scale production started. By January 1943, however, due to the needs of the Eastern Front, Hitler agreed on the development of a newly designed chassis with increased armor protection. This project was designed as the Panther II, and development was to follow along the Tiger II, with many components designed to be used in common to standardize production and ease maintenance logistics. The final design was to result in a Panther with a better frontal and side armor protection, the newly designed narrow Schmalturm with increased third front armor protection, and capabilities to mount either the latest 75mm Kampfwagen Kanone 42 L100 or the King Tiger's Long 88 KWK 43 L71, albeit without the muzzle brake. The Schmalturm was slightly different from that of the Panther Ausführung G, with special mountings for an infrared device and telescopic rangefinder. All of these modifications resulted in a considerably heavier vehicle. To compensate for the weight, the Panther II was intended to be powered by the new Maybach HL234 engine, with a total output of 900 brake horsepower. However, this engine wasn't due to be completed until August 1945. In early 1944, production of two prototypes was commissioned to the Maschinenfabrik Augsburg-Nürnberg. However, only one chassis was completed by early 1945, without the intended Schmalturm turret. By May 1944, the realization came that the German industry was simply unable to start production of the Panther II, and the project was abandoned in favor of further developing the already existing Panther tanks. It is possible that two Panther II prototype chassis were fitted with the Panther G's turret and used in battles at the end of the war, but this can't be confirmed. The Panther II we have in the game is the best case scenario of what if, and was in fact never finished the way that it represented. At battle rating 6.7, it fills a medium tank role in the German Tier 4 lineup. The main selling point of the Panther II is its famous long 88mm gun. There's a reason this cannon was considered the best of the war. This devastating weapon can fire an APHE shell with up to 235mm of penetration and approximately 109 grams of TNT filler at a muzzle velocity of exactly 1000 m per second every 8.5 seconds with a good crew. This makes the gun extremely effective, but not quite perfect. The high muzzle velocity does allow for effective long-range combat, but until you've researched both accuracy mods, your shots will never quite go where you aim them, which can be fatal at this tier where most of your opposition has specific weak spots you have to hit. The reload rate is definitely no slouch. For a gun of this power it is very good indeed. However, and especially on a stock crew with an 11 second reload, you can't really deal with multiple enemies effectively if they are aware of you. That said, groups of unaware enemies are quickly dispatched. Finally, the explosive filler can be a little bit lackluster. Against compact tanks like the T-34 it is just about enough to result in a decent chance of one-shot kills. But against larger and more spaced out tanks like the T-29 or even enemy Panther IIs and King Tigers, the shell just doesn't really quite produce enough fragmentation. Now, there are of course two other shell types on offer that you can research, but they don't really bring any benefit over the stock APHE shell. The first is heat, and frankly it's beyond useless, with only 110mm of penetration. A more interesting option is the APCR shell, with up to 272mm of penetration at close range and flat armor. But I can only see it as having any kind of real advantage over the stock APHE shell against a halted down T29. Everything else either has not enough armor to stop the stock shell in the first place, or is angled, which renders the APCR shell ineffective. Now let's talk a little bit about the Schmalturm and its gun handling. 
The turret itself, and especially when stock, has a noticeably slow turret traverse speed. In fact, it is so bad, I've often gotten myself killed in close range situations because I simply couldn't turn the gun around fast enough. With the upgrade this is somewhat amended, but you still need to make sure your gun is facing the right way before rounding a corner, if you are going to be using this thing as a brawler. The vertical guidance is... mediocre. Due to the experimental night vision and range finding gizmos, you can only elevate the gun between negative 8 and positive 15 degrees. Now, this is by no means Soviet tank level bad, but it still negates effective hill peaking. Combine that with the flat frontal turret armor and the weak lower glacis, and you've got yourself a tank that can't really crest a hill and fire effectively if the enemy's got eyes on you. Speaking of armor, the Schmalturm is peculiar. Compared to the earlier Panthers, you lose that rounded gun mantle that could occasionally bounce poorly aimed shots, and instead have a flat surface that is very easy to penetrate with any gun at this tier. However, the flat area is quite small and hard to hit as long as you stay on the move. The sides are angled just enough that any shot ki uh, coming directly from the front will most likely bounce, unless you hit the range funding ears. Combined with the good engine power, you can use this to your advantage and dance around the corner, making the enemy waste his shot and giving you just enough time to settle and aim your shot while they reload. Just try not to angle your turret, chances are you end up giving them enough angle to penetrate the side. The hull is decently armored, definitely much more so than the T-34's will face at this tier. That said, it's still not quite King Tiger level. The front upper glacis is decently angled and offers between 150 to 170 mm of effective armor. This should be enough to at least stop the Soviet 85mm gun, but anything of a higher caliber or equipped with APDS or HEATFS shells generally cuts it right through. One thing you can do is massively angle the front armor around the corner. Chances are the enemy will bounce. Just don't drive forwards too much, or you will expose the drive wheel into weak 60mm of side armor. Speaking of side armor, the Panther II does have 5mm Seitenschürzen, which can save you from heat and HE shells, but they are of limited use. Another strong point of the Panther II is the mobility, at least compared to pretty much everything else Germany has at this tier. The 60 km per hour top speed allows you to get across the map very quickly, and the 15 km per hour reverse speed is a welcome change from the earlier Panthers in famously horrible escape plan. Now I do have to make a distinction here between arcade and realistic mode. In arcade, even the stock tank has no problems moving around, and the high speed allows you to quickly set up in, in an ambush position and wait for the enemy to drive by. They don't really expect anyone to be intercepting them on their way to the cap. In realistic mode, it's a bit different. Without the engine upgrades, you'll struggle to get past 30 clones per hour in most situations, and as such you can't really effectively scout. So, what's the upgrade path? Well, it depends a bit on what you want to use the tank as. The Panther II does have the benefit of being able to fill various roles effectively. Now, I personally started off with this tank in arcade mode, since I found it to be just a little bit too sluggish in realistic mode. Stock, the tank is better suited as a squad support tank rather than a brawler. Not due to the mobility, but rather due to the overall slow gun handling and the bounciness of the stock suspension. The hull traverse can also be an issue depending on the terrain. On flat surfaces, the neutral steering does turn the swing around very quickly, but if you are up on even a shallow incline, you certainly turn like a battleship. As such, stick close to your friendly King Tigers, shoot what they shoot, and if you have the option, flank around whilst they hold the line. Especially on larger maps with multiple flanking points like El Alamein's Dunes, I found the Panther to be extremely effective at this role. If you want to continue in the squad support role, try to get the protection and the firepower mod as soon as possible. Now, if you want to turn this thing into a brawler, you're going to need a different set of mods. By nature, the Panther II's gun, as well as the uh, front and side armor, make it a born side scraper. If you can find a piece of tall cover, like a house or a large rock to hide behind and work the sides to limit incoming firing angles and shoot enemy tanks one by one, you can get extremely good games in this thing. If I recall correctly, my record was 12 kills in arcade and 7 kills in realistic on a single life. The thing is, in order to pull this off, you need to minimize the time you spend sitting still and exposing the turret front. So you need to reduce the time it takes your gun to stabilize. For this, three mods are crucial. Suspension, brakes and elevation mechanism. If you're going to be playing arcade only, you don't really need the engine mods. The tank already is extremely mobile by itself. If you are playing realistic, however, I would get the engine mod sometime before the ammo, artillery and rangefinder. Ah yes, speaking of the rangefinder, 
Once you have that, you can use the Swing as a long-range sniper thanks to its excellent gun. But you will be wasting the potential of this tank if you choose to sit at the back of the map. If you want to help out your team and win the most games, do stick near to the front line. Now, the Panther 2's mobility might encourage you to either play the Swing like a Hellcat or to rush the caps. But I found neither to be the most effective. Whilst the tank is mobile by itself, the mediocre gun depression and huge size of the tank make it pretty hard to stay on scene if you uh, are going to go around the outskirts of the map. And whilst you have the mobility to reach caps fast, it doesn't really do well in open face-to-face -to -face combat against enemy tanks due to its armor. Instead, I found this thing to be extremely effective at setting up ambush positions, rush forward to cover overlooking choke points, setting up crossfire positions, overlooking spots where the enemy is likely to be facing your friendly tanks, and so on. A single Panther II can turn the battle around by finding the one flank that allows you to shoot at the wall of enemies bouncing off of your friendly King Tiger's armor, which in turn allows them to move forward. Oftentimes, my games have ended in our entire team pushing the enemy back into the spawn. Finally, the last place I love on this thing to be effective at is the lone insurgent type. However, this one only really works if you have a upgraded tank. Now, as I said before, flanking around the entire outskirts of the map isn't the best thing to do. Instead, you have to find the one sneaky route on the map no one expects you to be at, preferably with cover from multiple firing angles. To give a couple of examples, on Berlin I like to take this thing into the pond and peek over a muddy hill midway through, where I am completely in cover from the northern spawn and can shoot the tanks advancing to the Reichstag right, in the, right on the sides. On El Alamein I tend to flank around the city through the desert and then come up behind the enemy whilst they are occupied holding off against my team advancing to the cab. On Poland I use the northern houses to side scrape and take out tanks one by one. Essentially you have to learn how to effectively use cover when and where to peek, and what targets to prioritize. If you find yourself face to face in the open against more than one enemy, you're generally dead. But if you can be sneaky and use cover to shield yourself from everything but the specific enemy you want to assassinate, you're going to win games for your team. So what are my final opinions on the Panther 2? In the right hands, this thing might just be the best medium tank at its tier. The long 88 can work wonders, and with the mobility you can give the, the enemy quite a nasty surprise, especially since they're not used to Germans being this fast up to this point. That said, you need to have patience and learn the quirks of this tank, or you find yourself dead very quickly. In all cases, try to be an asset to your team. A solo panther is a dead one. Alright, that's a panther too. I've had quite a blast with this thing. It really can be an excellent machine. In any case, if you've made it up to this point, you pretty much owe me a like. Or you know what, else I'm going to send it in the Königstiger. If you're new around here, do check out my channel for other videos and, if you like what you see, subscribe. Before we close off, I want to make a little announcement. Now, I realize I haven't really streamed since last year, so I will be doing one soon. Chances are this video will go up on Friday, so I'll be live either today or on Saturday. In either case, follow me on Twitch and on Twitter so you don't miss the stream. Alright, enough rambling. As always, lads, my name is Mike Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky, take a deeper breath and give it time. You can walk the path among the lines, with your shattered frame of mind. Lose that you could always stay, we can wait right here and play, until somehow you can find.